is an encore presentation of CBC Sports. The sun shines brightly, the snow is plentiful. A picture-perfect setting, Black Home Mountain welcomes the best freestylers in the world. World champion Philip LaRoche has soared through these skies before. Well, uh, I think the Owens Corning competition here in Black Home is nice. It's at home and I uh, feel happy, you know, to be back home. And uh, hopefully I'll try to, to get my big jump uh, in, in this competition. And uh, I'm getting back on the track. I'm getting a little bit uh, old now, so I have to uh, keep going uh, in front and have a good jumping. All the world champions are here. Lena Cheryozova hopes her first visit will be a memorable one. The mogul master of 93, Jean-Luc Broussard, is back home and searching for his first win this season. Well, I'm anxious to uh, compete again here at Black Home because uh, I had a good and bad result before Christmas and I want to begin the year with a good, on a good feat, you know, with a good result and I also made my Olympic selection done. Norway's Stina Lise Hattestad is trying to recapture the magic of last season. The world champion is up against an undefeated American, Donna Weinbrecht. Tables have turned this year. All eyes are on Fabrice Becker. With two wins, he heads into Blackholm in the driver's seat. Ellen Breen cruised through 93, picking up a world championship title. This season has presented the American with stiff competition. Canada's combined queen, Katrina Kubank, has continued her winning streak. I guess I had really good results the uh, first three in, in, uh, before Christmas. Uh, I just have to, you know, keep them behind me and, and not really worry about them because I'm still trying to qualify for the Olympics. And uh, um, so, I, you know, I just have to do my events, all three of them, pretty strong. This is CBC's continuing coverage of World Cup freestyle skiing. For the fourth consecutive year, Black Home Mountain in Whistler, British Columbia, plays host to the best freestylers in the world. A showcase of world-class talent in what is the first stop on the North American tour, the Owens Corning World Freestyle on CBC. Last month in Piancavallo, Italy, Canadian aerialist Nicholas Fontaine rose to the top of the field to win his first World Cup event ever, Canada's first gold so far this season. Finally, after being runner-up to teammate Philip LaRoche at the 92 Alberville Games and living in the shadow of idol Lloyd Langlois, Fontaine came into his own, experiencing victory for the first time in his career. They call him the gambler, and for Pierre Forget, the payoff was gold. In an all-important Olympic year, Forget, a virtual unknown, gave it his all, surprising the world to win his first World Cup event before the holidays. An early Christmas present for Pierre. The weather changes constantly in the mountains. A little fog has rolled in around Overbite, the site for the mogul competition. Hi everyone, welcome to CBC's continuing coverage of World Cup Freestyle Skiing. I'm Melfi Schlegel. Joining me as always is Anna Fraser. Black Home is the start of the North American Tour, but Anna, for Canadians, an extremely important event. It's their second last chance to qualify before next month's Olympic Games. There's tremendous pressure on the young skiers because Canada can enter four men and four women in both the mogul and the aerial event at the Olympics. However, they can only enter six different athletes. Right now on the Canadian men's team, there are seven athletes that have done well enough to qualify. For young skiers like Pierre Forget and Nicolas Fontaine, it's tough. They've already won gold medals, but they may not go to the Olympic Games. Speaking of Pierre Forget, there's nothing quite like that first World Cup victory. It's, uh, it's the greatest feeling. It's the greatest moment in my life. Uh, I couldn't expect to win uh, that one because uh, in Ting, we uh, were supposed to, uh, we were talking about having two competitions in Ting or two competitions in La Plagne because Pierre Cavallo was cancelled. And I was going like, I'd rather compete in Ting because La Plagne, it's steep and long and I hate that course. And uh, last year's, I didn't make it until the first year. I was in the publicity banner on the side that I crashed big. And this year's, I did the job and uh, it was a great feeling. Looking at the men's mobile team preseason, if I'd had to pick the first winner, I would have put my money on John Smart or Jean-Luc Broussard. But it's great to see that when they don't pull through, it's a younger skier like Pierre Forget who can do it. Well, another name we have to mention is Nicolas Fontaine, who won just before the holidays the first medal for the men's Canadian aerial team so far this season. I was really happy in Pierre Cavallo. When I landed my second jump, I knew I had a really good chance to win the competition. And when I earned my score, I... I knew I was winning, so I was really happy. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't speak. 
Anna, Nicholas is a veteran of this men's aerial team. He must have been wondering when his first win would ever happen. The first time that we saw Nicholas really shine was the 92 Olympics when he won a silver medal behind Philippe Laroche. He's been in the shadow of Philippe Laroche and Lloyd Langlois. It's great to see that he's finally making a name for himself. Well, Canadians are extremely happy to be competing back at home, but for two Canadians, they're competing in their own backyard. Well, the Canadians love to be at Blackholm. They have their summer training camps here. There's a lot of Easterners who've become transplanted and now call the area home. But for Bronwyn Thomas and John Smart, it is their backyard. Friends and family are out to watch them. There's going to be tremendous pressure. Well, speaking of Bronwyn Thomas, we'll see how she fares in today's event here at Blackholm. Let's get to the women's moguls. Let's take a quick look at the standings heading into Black Home. Donna Weinbracht, after a year off, is back on top, undefeated this season. The 93 world champion Stina Lise Hadestad is in third, the top Canadian Bronwyn Thomas in eighth. For Olympic champion Donna Weinbracht, team marked the first event since her injury. In her comeback year, she's pacing herself for next month's Olympic Games. I'm a little timid with my skiing and training, and I don't know where my boundaries are, and when competition comes, I seem to push it a little bit more and I'm more dynamic and on it so uh, I'm trying to pull it all together that I train well, I compete well um, so that up here I'm ready for Olympics in February. A big consideration of course is the weather. The fog has been rolling in and out all morning. This is Canadian skier Katrina Kubank, a combined skier. This is earlier in the elimination rounds and Anna, she was having a terrific season so far as a combined skier. This, however, wasn't quite her day in the moguls. Well, Katrina has two things to worry about. Not only making the finals, which is the top 12, but also finishing the day as the top combined skier. For the combined skiers, their scores from the eliminations in ballet, aerials, and moguls are totaled together, and then a winner is determined. Now, Katrina is generally a fairly strong skier in moguls. However, she was very slow today. The course is steep, it's 32 degrees, and the competitors really have to know it to ski it well. Let's give her a, head. Nice a very labored Katrina run Kubank. for Katrina 99. Kubank of Canada. Canada. You can see her ranked 21st place. Her time was extremely slow, 39.44 seconds. Time, That's translated into points, 4.58. Of course, the top 12 Katrina move Kubank. into the finals for Katrina. She'll be extremely disappointed. Now, a Canadian who expects to make finals every time out is Canadian Bronwyn Thomas. Very strange situation here today, Anna. She thought she heard the countdown, but apparently jumped the gun. And a quarter of the way down in her run, she completely stopped. Well, it was strange because over the speakers, we heard the 3-2-1 go after she was already out of the start gate. And it seemed like it just broke her concentration. And so she stopped. This is very rare for a competitor to do because you risk the chance of being disqualified. In any case, a very confusing situation. Bronwyn did appeal to the judges. This was the result, her rerun. She was the final competitor in the eliminations. Well, Bronwyn came out of the start, Kate, very strong. Now, remember, the judges award points. It's 50% for turns. One of the things the judges watch for is smoothness and the ease with which the competitor skis down through the course. Bronwyn seemed to get a little caught up. You can see that she's almost overturning, causing her to her arms to move and upper body to really be moving, and that lowers her turn points. It almost seems that she's trying to control her speed. Speed counts for 25% of the score, and a lot of competitors on these steep courses want to hold back just a little bit so that they don't lose control. No question the problems earlier in the elimination round, uh, a big problem for Bronwyn Thomas. You can see her rank is 13th, a big disappointment for Bronwyn Thomas and Canada. No women would advance into the final competition. Well, I think she may have been frustrated by the rerun. It's very hard. You get motivated for your first run, and then you stop, and then you have to get your mind cleared and get ready to start for that second run. That may have been a factor for Bronwyn today. Um, it was all confusing up in the start gate. I thought I heard them say go, but they hadn't said go yet. So I was skiing down, and he was, our, he was back in the start saying one, two, three. So I didn't know whether to stop or go, and then someone said stop, and I, I was all confused. So I thought, well... I don't know what to do. So. <laughs> How do you feel about your run? Um, it's all right. I was a little bit, um, a little bit messy in the middle. I know that. That's probably where I lost it. But um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's okay, I guess. <laughs> 
We're now into the final competition. This is American Ann Dowling. Anna, she had a great elimination round, and this is turning out to be one tough course to ski. It is a tough course. Now, you see that Ann is coming down the left side of the course. Each mogul course has five fall lines, and the competitors can choose the one that they want to ski. They're supposed to be all judged equally. The judges look at them as, as being even. Anne's having a great one, run. You can see how she seems to be skiing a lot faster than Bronwyn. And see how smooth it looks. She's just absorbing and extending and keeping her upper body straight down the fall line. Now she's done two single maneuver uprights. That she did a spread at the top and a daffy at the bottom. Some of the women will do doubles. The judges want to see a higher degree of difficulty. Here we're seeing an excellent spread. See how she lands, it gets right back into her turning. That's what the judges want to see. No problems today for American Ann Dowling. She tackles this course with ease. Of course, being the first one down, she's in first place, a total with 23.14 points. That will be the standard in the women's finals today. Coming up next, Tatiana Mittermeier of Germany, a veteran skier. Her best so far this season was at the opener in Team France. She placed fifth. She's certainly looking to move into the medal podium today. Well, and it's very possible, Elfie. Tatiana has been an incredibly consistent skier for six years. She medaled when moguls were a demonstration event in 88. She has been in and out of the medals for six years. She did have some work done to her knees. She's had many operations. She said that her knees were worked on this summer, and it's great because they are not bothering her at all this week. You can see the fog has rolled in once again, not only tough for our cameramen, but it has to be tough for the judges. She's having a great run. Oh, a little bit of, mis of a mistake at the bottom there, just lost her balance, but a very fast run. She did two good jumps. I, I think this could be a medal run. Anna, you mentioned her knee problems. She was a former alpine skier, seven knee operations. Thought she'd try her luck at freestyle skiing, having a terrific day today. Well, probably her only mistake was right there where she got bucked a little bit. It will not affect her scores too much. As you can see, 23.2. That could be a top three score. It's, it's a high score for today's event. So Mittemeyer takes the lead, and up next is the world champion, Stina Lees, how to start of Norway. Anna, she's still looking for her first win this season. Well, from this angle, you get a very good idea of how big these air bumps are. Jumps are 25% of the score, and you can see that those air bumps that the skiers fly off of sometimes are taller than the skiers. Stina's showing a great example of coming straight down the fall line, carrying her speed. See her shoulders and head are staying very straight and very level. They're not bouncing all over the place. There's her second jump, a daffy. Oh, and here's an example of where speed can make or break you. It's very important that a skier keeps their hips right over their feet as they're absorbing and extending. Stina let her hips get behind her after this jump. It's right here that her upper body gets behind her feet and she can't control it. She skied off the course and she won't receive a score for that. Huge disappointment for Stina Lees, of course, that puts her in 12th place last in the finals. This is the Olympic champion Donna Weinbrack making her comeback this season. Anna, she is undefeated. Well, she's come back as strong as she ever skied, having won the first two World Cups. She hasn't been having any problem on this course. There's a spread eagle. Now, that's a single maneuver upright. It's worth 0.6 for degree of difficulty. Some of the women have done a double maneuver upright, which is worth 0.9. We'll have to see if Donna does it for her second. The fog having absolutely no effect on Donna Weinbrecht in today's competition. She looks fantastic, not holding back at all. There was the twister spread. Now Donna spends hours on this course. Even after the course is closed in practice, she's up there with her coaches looking at every little mogul, every little rut. And as a result, she can come off the jumps and do the big jumps. This is what makes her a champion. Here you can see the consistent turning pace. It's very important. The judges look for that. You would never know that Donna had major reconstructive surgery on her knee last winter. No question, Donna Weinbrecht is once again the queen of the moguls, a total score of 24.71 points. She wins big here in Blackholm. Third consecutive World Cup victory for Donna Weinbrecht. A big move in the standings for Tatiana Mittemeyer in second. A first medal ever for Ann Dowling. The top Canadian Bronwyn Thomas just shy of making today's finals. 
looking forward to competing at home next week. That'll be your first. They haven't seen you since the injury. Oh, I'm very excited. I always love going to Breckenridge and uh, being on your home turf is nice, but it's also a little pressure too, you know. <laughs> They have the home crowd screaming for you and stuff, but it's nice to be back. It's nice to have a chance to ski again. That's what I kind of keep on reminding myself. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So the standings after three World Cups, Donna Weinbrecht has a lock on first place, a change in second. With her silver medal today, Mittemeyer moves into second. Bronwyn Thomas remains in eighth. When we return to Blackholm, the men will challenge the overbite course. When you're looking for the best insulation for your home, remember, la, 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 la. not all insulation is the same. La, 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 la. Watch out for imposters. La, la. Do it right. Do it pink. Start the new year off just right with no charge automatic or equivalent credit of up to $1,000 right now on selected new Mazdas. Hurry to your Mazda dealer for great deals. Now doesn't that feel just right? Uh, the cost of living, uh, the cost of raising kids, the cost of peanut butter. Oh, something that doesn't go up in price. It's 1995. That's good. Okay. Nick, you paying attention? Yeah. 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 In the Olympics, they call it a double full, full, full. Unbelievable. When Philippe Laroche does it, they call it gold. The Air Force has landed. The best freestyle ski team in the world. Canada's team. The secret is out. The average commuter spends an hour and 13 minutes driving every day. So ask yourself whether that hour belongs to the road or whether the road belongs to you. The smooth handling Mazda 626 Kronos. It's all about working and living, chasing your dreams, and driving your Mazda. Freestyle, brought to you by Owens Corning Canada, proud sponsor of the Canadian Freestyle Ski Team. These are the standings after two events. The French have a lock on the top three spots. The top Canadian is John Smart, and world champion Jean-Luc Broussard has a plan of attack for this course. Black home is still a steep course. It's hard to jump, but uh, I will try to do what Pierre did in uh, La Plagne. A good safe run to the bottom with some two good air, and I think that will be good. This was the elimination rounds, and Frenchman Edgar Grosbron was second overall heading into Blackholm, but Anna, he did not have an easy time with this run. Well, Edgar isn't skiing to the same ability as we've seen in the past. I don't know whether the knee injury took away some of his confidence. He had a great start to the run, but it was on his bottom jump. Now, Edgar used to be referred to as a cat because no matter how he landed, no matter what problems he got into, he could always get out, get back balanced on his feet and ski without difficulty. Here's the example of a double twister and he just was not able to get back over his skis and finish it and it kept him out of the finals. A lot of bad luck for Edgar Grosperon. He could only muster a 23rd placing. Of course, the top 12 move into the finals. Big disappointment for Edgar Grosperon. Well, it's been a disappointment for the whole French team. They did well pre-Christmas, but they just don't seem to be as consistent this season. It may be the Olympic pressure. What a great experience for rookie Mark McDonnell. Now, because Canada is the host country, they can add competitors. Mark is a NORAM athlete in his first year. What a debut in his first World Cup performance ever. Well, it's a really exciting day for both Mark and his coach, Steve Faring. Now, the NORAM circuit is the circuit in North America. The, some of the Japanese come to it, the Australians and the New Zealand skiers as well, but it's a chance for the younger skiers to get the competition experience that they need to prepare them for World Cup. And I think Mark is showing a fantastic example of how the NORAM circuit does prepare them. They come on and they can be competitive. Just an outstanding performance by Canadian Mark McDonnell in the elimination round. A total of 22.26 points, 11th. Good enough for the finals. And with all the pressure in his first World Cup, Mark McDonnell pulls through. Mark, you had a fantastic semi-final run. Did you ever think that in your first World Cup you'd be getting ready to ski a final? No, never. Not in my wildest dreams. I, I, I can't believe it. It's still like 
total dream, you know. Uh, we just saw you talking with Steve, Steve, and Peter. What advice were they giving you for the finals? Um, mostly just uh, my second air. They want me to straighten out a bit more on my 360, so it's, it's going to be tough. Some of Blackcomb's recreational skiers looks like they're going to stay a little while to enjoy the mogul competition. A lot of Canadians in the finals, but first up from Sweden is Anders Jonell. Anna, he was 12th in the elimination round, just squeaked into the finals. We saw a lot of top competitors, particularly from the French team, that normally make the finals not get into the finals, so it's opened the doors for some newer skiers. There you can see he threw the brakes on. He's having a problem staying directly in his fall line, and his turn points will be a little lower because the judges want to see you stay consistently in one line. That was a Daffy Daffy Twister. That's a triple maneuver upright. Very difficult to do because you've got to go very fast into the jump and really get high. He's coming into his Daffy Daffy Twister. Now this jump is out of 1.25. The men try to do the triple maneuver uprights because the degree of difficulty is higher. A double is only worth 0.9. So Sweden's Anders Jonell sets the standard with a total score of 22.42 points. Back up top, our first Canadian, Mark McDonnell, just 19 years old. Anna, what a big moment in his young career. There are his teammates from the Noram circuit cheering him on in today's competition. Can you imagine what is going through his mind? He must be very nervous, but Elfie, it almost looked like he smiled coming out of the start gate. He is so relaxed. There's a triple maneuver upright that was twister, twister spread at the top of the course. That is difficult. You can see he's having some problems with his turns. He got shot off his fall line, and um, the judges want to see consistent turning pace. There's the 360. Now, his coaches have told him before the finals to straighten up. He did. This is a fantastic run for a young Noram skier. You know, his best performance to date is 22nd at the Canadian Senior Nationals today. He's in the finals at his very first World Cup event. There's a 360. You can see how straight he landed in perfect position to continue his turning pace through the finish line. He is going to be ecstatic with this run. And look at that score, 22.83 points. Mark McDonnell of Canada takes the lead away from Anders Jonell of Sweden. And there's an interested spectator, Philip LaRoche, with his fiancée. We'll see him a little bit later on in the aerial competition. But up next, Canadian Pierre Forget. He won big in La Plaine just before the holidays. That was a huge victory for Canada. Well, prior to winning that event, Pierre hadn't really thought of himself as a contender for one of the six Olympic positions. But with the first place, if he can get another top 12 finish, there's a very good chance that he could be the third mogul skier at the the Olympics. Look at this fog, it has really set in. It has to be awfully disconcerting for the athletes. Well, you can see Pierre was trying to recover. He got a little bit back. He tried to do the double pole plant to recover for that jump. And look at this, even with that mistake on the jump, he's prepared to finish on one ski. Pierre knows he needs the highest placing possible to put himself in contention for the Olympics. Here you can see he just gets a little back, does the double pull plant to try and get balance, but can't, flies through the air and is unable to perform his proper aerial maneuver. But it's at this point that he's quit thinking because he knows if someone who skis after him makes a mistake, there's a chance he'll finish better than 12. Anna, they call Pierre the gambler. He certainly took his chances today, but only good enough for eighth place at the moment. Here is your leader, Mark McDonnell, the rookie Canadian. He's still wondering what the heck is going on. Two interested parties on the left, John Smart's father on the right. There's his brother, Pat, and up next, Canadian John Smart from Lions Bay, British Columbia. He is definitely out for revenge. He had a rough time at last year's Blackcomb World Cup. He's been under a lot of pressure this year. He's been overwhelmed by the media. We saw in training, he didn't want to talk to anybody. He would do his run, zoom right to the chairlift, and then head back up for another run. I think he really wants to prove himself here. He's having a little difficulty in the middle, just a little wild. The judges want to see a calm upper body, the deflection off the fall line with just the legs, a good 360 at the bottom, but he seems slower than some of the other skiers. 
And remember, time counts for 25% of the score. When he got a little, when he was having these problems in the middle, he slowed him down. Here's the 360. That's a high degree of difficulty. A good jump to put at the bottom. A bit of a wild run for John Smart of Canada. Total score 22.59 points. That puts him in second behind Mark McDonnell. You can see his time points are very low. He was over two seconds slower than Mark. Time counts. You've got to ski fast. Here's a guy who is in definite contention for the gold medal, Russian Sergei Shuplatov. And I remember at the start of the season, you said the Russians are the ones to watch. It's amazing the improvement that we've seen over the summer. Look how clean they are. That was a twister spread, double maneuver upright. Everything they do is polished and tidy. And the judges like to see this. Look how calm the upper body is staying. Now we should point out, Sergei is a combined skier. Double twister spread. That's the triple maneuver upright. This is a fantastic run. Great to see that a combined skier is skiing so well in the moguls. Sergey is currently fourth in the overall standings on the World Cup circuit. His best, a fifth place in team. Look at the definition. Clear twister, twister spread. The feet stuck cleanly together and then right into a consistent turning pace. And look at the score. 25.84 points. That puts the Russian Sergey Shuplitsov into first place. Mark McDonnell is bumped down into second. John Smart of Canada is in third. And up next, world champion. Jean-Luc Brassard. There's his sister Anne-Marie Brassard. She has an injury this season. She'll be out for the entire year. Now Jean-Luc was the top in the elimination round. He said earlier he wants a gold medal. He wants to start the year off right. Well, he's the last competitor in the final, so if there's anyone who can beat Sergei, it's Jean-Luc. He started with his trademark Cossack. Now that's a single maneuver upright. It's only worth 0 0.6. It's Oh, we can see this is not typical of Jean-Luc. He's being bucked around by the moguls. There's the, a triple twister, twister spread for his bottom jump. But the difficulty he had in the middle may lower his turn scores. A few problems for Jean-Luc Broussard, and he seems to be making this a habit, crashing into the fence. We saw this happen last year here at Blackholm. Well, Elfie, it was a very solid run. I don't want to give the wrong impression, but Sergei's was very clean. Jean-Luc started great. Here's his trademark Cossack that you're about to see. Now this is only a single. The degree of difficulty isn't as high. So an athlete has to choose whether they want to max out a single or go for the higher degree of difficulty and do a double. Jean-Luc chose to do the single. I don't know how it's doing from the judge. So for Jean-Luc Broussard, 24.05 points is good enough for second place. That means Mark McDonnell wins his first medal ever in a World Cup event. That means Sergei In the final standings, Sergei Shuplasov is tops today. Jean-Luc Broussard makes his way back to the medal podium. In his first World Cup appearance ever, Mark McDonnell wins bronze. A strong Canadian effort in today's Black Home event. Mark, in your wildest dreams, did you ever think at your first World Cup you'd be going home with a medal? No. Never. <laughs> What's going through your head right now? I still can't believe it. It's like a dream, I don't know, I, it's hard to explain, but I can't believe it yet, it's, it's unreal. Before the, sem before the finals, we saw you talking to the three coaches, mm -hmm. they were giving you some advice, yeah. did you do what they told you, did it pay off? Yeah, yeah, that, that was my biggest goal, it wasn't, my goal wasn't so much to, in the placings, you know, but it was to, my personal goal, like what I wanted to accomplish with the added, you know, the added pressure and, you know, added obstacles. So after three events, France's Olivier Cote holds on to first place. The Russian breaks the lock by the French to move into second. And with a silver medal, Jean-Luc Broussard inches his way back up to the medal podium. A very important medal for Jean-Luc Broussard and a strong showing by Canadians. Jean-Luc, a little problem in the middle, but you recovered. Uh, that was close. <laughs> oh, it's because I had full adrenaline in my blood to uh, just <laughs> keep going. But uh, I'm very surprised about that. I think... Uh, it's bad because I knew, I knew I had a very good possibility to finish first year and it was something very possible and uh, I was thinking about that a little bit and uh, I knew it was uh, a lot of people did some mistake, possibility was there, I missed it that time. I'm second for the second year but uh, it's good, it was a good day for the Canadian. Mark McDonald, the big surprise, is third, John is fourth. So for me uh, it's perfect because with that I'm back in track and I go to the Olympics. When we return to Black Home Mountain, the women's ballet event is next on Wishbone. We'll be back.
What are we going to do about the RSP this year? You got any ideas? There's always GICs, but nah. So we get a tax break. Look at interest rates. Can't we do better than that? You'd think so. Maybe we need a game plan, you know? Look at the big picture. Well, let's get on it. Call investors today. While every car maker offers protection to help people survive accidents, one company asked, what could be safer than not having an accident at all? Recently, they developed a new anti-lock brake, specially designed to cost less. So this year, anti-lock brakes aren't just for expensive cars, because this year, they're standard equipment on 95% of the cars they make. Well, we often listen uh, to the world of sex in our kitchen in the country. Bob Oxley and the others come up with uh, very good news stories. They have a fund of correspondence who are reliable. The World at Six from the National Newsroom. Radio's not as concerned with getting ripping pictures as television is, so they often have rather more to say about a story and go into it more deeply. the next generation find this planet worth living on? Smoke means progress, we used to say. Now we know better. But can business change its ways and still make a profit? Better light bulbs, eggshells for sale, new jackets from old bottles, reused car parts. Watch Greening Business. Wednesday on The Nature of Things with David Suzuki. Welcome back to Black Home. Over 3,000 people came out to enjoy the opening ceremony, including team introductions. As always, the Canadians were the crowd favourites. Former Canadian team members were on hand, including retired member John Ross, who entertained this crowd. The grand finale began with a human firecracker and kicked off a spectacular fireworks display designed by Patrick Brawl. An amazing eight-minute display that lit up the entire base of Black Home Mountain. Let's take a look at the women's results after three World Cup events. Ellen Breen sits on top with only one win this season. Tough competition from Russian Oksana Kuchenko, who won the season opener, the top Canadian, Katrina Kubank, in eighth. This is the finals, and Ellen Breen, Anna, even with the rule changes, she really seems to be holding her own. Well, the rule changes now have 50% of the score, artistic impression, and 50% technical merit. The technical merit component is six maneuvers, three jumps and three flips, and this is Ellen's strong point. There's an example of a fantastic 720. Very clean, high, good clean edge set. That's what the judges look for. Followed up by another 720, a little stumble. Now, Ellen seems to be having problems on that top jump. It's actually her second jump, but she's always stumbling out of it. She lands in the cross position, and it seems to be her little problem this year. No Canadians competing in today's finals. The top in the elimination rounds was Katrina Kubank in 13th place. Well, that's a disappointing stumble for Ellen on her recross 720. She's usually so strong on her jumps. I don't know whether it's because the snow is sticky and the skis stop on those landings and the body keeps moving. Here's one of the mandatory pole flips. That's called a gut. Full. It's a full twist on a flip with the poles in the stomach. In the past, Ellen's weakness has been her artistic impression, but with the new rule changes, she seems to be much better at interpreting her music. Ending with a nice split full. It was an adequate routine. Those two mistakes, though, may keep Ellen out of top spot. 
few problems early on for Ellen Breen. She does finish her routine strongly. We'll see what the judges think. Total score of 24.75 points. Puts her in first place with one competitor left. We'll see if this score can hold up. Final competitor, Oksana Kuchenko of Russia. She has been Ellen Breen's nemesis so far this season. Anna, what type of a run does Oksana need to win today? Well, Oksana's scores in artistic impression are always, or generally, higher than Ellen's. But the thing that she doesn't have is the technical difficulty. Ellen received very high scores at 13.75, even with the two mistakes. These two skiers are completely opposite styles, where Ellen is more athletic, Oksana is more refined and elegant. We weren't sure if we were going to see Oksana in North America. She's been sponsoring herself through all these World Cup events, but she's just picked up a new sponsor that has allowed her to compete here in North America. That's Owens Corning. The wonderful thing about watching Oksana is everything she does is clean and polished. Oh, now there, it was a solid jump, but a little stumble on the landing. So that will probably equalize with one of Ellen's mistakes. Run, but I have to point out again, Oksana doesn't have the same degree of difficulty as Ellen, even though her artistic impression usually is higher. I don't know whether she will be able to get ahead of Ellen. And there you see the score is 23.85 points. That's not good enough for the gold medal today. Ellen Breen of the United States wins yet another World Cup event here in Blackcomb. The American wins her second World Cup event, beating rival Oksana Kuchenko, the top Canadian Katrina Kubank, in 13th place. And after four events, no change in the first and second spot, Ellen Breen, Oksana Kuchenko, but the top Canadian once again, Katrina Kubank in ninth. Definitely, I want to be world champion and I want to win again more than anything in the world. I mean, it's definitely not something that, uh, that I don't think about every day. So, uh, no, I don't, I don't think about anybody behind me for sure, no. Congratulations. Thank you very much, you guys. When we return to Blackcomb, we'll have more of the ballet competition from Wishbone. The men are next. When you're looking for the best insulation for your home, remember, not all insulation is the same. Watch out for imposters. Do it right, do it pink. Come on, guys, if you win this game, no practice tomorrow. Boys, we win this one. No practice for a week. And I'll take you to see a great movie this weekend. Well, uh, win or lose, we're all gonna have a triple cheeseburger at McDonald's. McDonald's Taste of the Month is the triple cheeseburger, alone or as part of an extra value meal. <laughs> at McDonald's today. strength greater than almost every sport yet when the judges are watching ballet is grace under pressure ashley harrod magic part of the best freestyle ski team in the world canada's team the secret is out all-star saturday on cbc it starts with the nhl all-star game live from new york Gretzky against Raw, Lindros versus Potman. Rod McLean and the Molson Hockey Night in Canada crew bring you all the action. Then later, see the game's best go head to head in the skills competition and see legends of the game in action. The NHL All Star Game, the All Star Skills Competition. The action begins next Saturday on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC.
Welcome back to Wishbone, Elfie Schlegel along with Anna Fraser. Clearly the class of the field in the men's ballet competition, Fabrice Becker of France, Heine Baumgartner of Switzerland is in second. The top Canadian, Matt Christensen, is in 11th position. This is the finals of the men's ballet in Switzerland's Heine Baumgartner. Anna, he's always been in contention, a real veteran of competition. He's finally come into his own this season. The rule changes have really played to Heine's advantage. He's always been strong in the artistic impression component, but he's upped his technical merit, and as a result, we're seeing him in the top three. As we saw in the Moguls competition, the weather is certainly a factor. It's snowing off and on, and as you can see, the fog is quite heavy. Well, Heine was a little slow getting into his technical merit section of his routine. He's now just completed two pole flips. And remember, each competitor has to do three flips and three jumps. There's an inside 720. That's a double revolution. Some of the men will do 900s, which are two and a half. And that was another pole flip note. Heine does a Rudy, which is one and a half twist, in a different position. Instead of putting his hands in his gut, he does it in the split position, which is the hands at the side of the body. Ending with a tip drag 720. Now, it's going to be difficult for Heine because his degree of difficulty is not really high. The only skier to have beaten Fabrice Becker so far this season, Heine Baumgartner receives a score of 23.40 points. Of course, coming up next is the world champion, Fabrice Becker. Anna, he has won twice this season. He has only lost once. That was behind Heine Baumgartner. He is really the dominant skier in men's ballet today. His routine is loaded with personality and difficulty. An excellent stay cross 720. Right into a double twisting pole flip. Here's an example of Fabrice's fantastic interpretation of the music. It's very different music. It catches everybody's attention. And the styles change. The judges want to see interpretation of the music and a style change. A full twisting gut flip, landing in the cross position. More difficult than landing in the open ski position. I think where Fabrice leaves the other skiers far behind him is that he moves from move to move without any hesitation. Look how easily he gets into a one pole, gut full, and then right into the end of his routine. Fantastic performance. A smooth routine for Francis Fabrice Becker, and yes, that does it, 24.40 points, the number one ballet skier here at Blackholm. In the final results, unquestionably the top today, Fabrice Becker with three wins this season. Heine Baumgartner of Switzerland close behind in second. The top Canadian in 10th place is David Bellamer. And after four World Cup events, sitting comfortably on top, Fabrice Becker, Heine Baumgartner of Switzerland in second, having a rough time this season. Runa Christensen of Norway is third. Fabrice, one more win. Are you really happy with today's results? Yeah, pretty happy because the conditions were really tough. It began snowing uh, for the final and uh, the snow was a little bit catchy, but I'm really happy I stand on my feet. Didn't do any mistakes, so that's what I have to do today. As we said, the top Canadian in today's competition was combined skier David Bellamer, and let's take a look at his run. Well, this has been a fantastic comeback story. David was jumping on an airbag and broke his femur very badly. He was out for a whole season having going through rehabilitation. He's back, he's skiing all three events, and this was a huge surprise to end up the top Canadian in ballet.
He's really made some advances this season. Even from his performances in teen, we've seen a great improvement. The top Canadian for the day, this strong result in ballet puts David in contention for the combined title with Russian Sergei Shuplitsov. When we return, more World Cup freestyle skiing up next, the women's aerial competition from Schoolmarm. Anne Murray in Nova Scotia, Sunday, January 23rd on CBC. Starring Anne Murray. On fire's place to the children's delight. With her special guest, Rita McNeil. And starring the Rankins, the Gospel Heirs, and Men of the Deeps. One hour of family entertainment. Anne Murray in Nova Scotia, Sunday, January 23rd on CBC. You don't want us in the fur business. Jobs or animal rights. That tape misrepresents what we're doing here. And the town is in uproar. His furs have nothing to do with the Lynx River Project. Misguided Loyalty on North of 60, Thursday at 8. What a week. Parliament's in business again, and so were we. The Royal Canadian Air Force, where we don't take anything seriously. We're back this week. The Royal Canadian Air Force on CBC, Friday at 7.30 on Living Television. This is the magic of radio. Every night, experience the extraordinary talents of Canadian and internationally acclaimed performance artists. Musicians, dancers, playwrights, filmmakers, authors. The best in the world, the best in radio. The Arts Tonight, weeknights at 6.30 on CBC Stereo. The Odyssey, a fall from a tree fort changes the life of Jay Ziegler forever. In a coma, he dangles by a thread that connects two very different worlds. The Odyssey, an incredible journey through the subconscious to a strange, dreamlike place run by kids. Is Jay stuck in a mind movie, or will he unlock the secret of his destiny? Jay, are you here? Don't miss the season premiere of The Odyssey, January 24th on CBC. Welcome back to Black Home Mountain. Covering an event like this on a huge mountain involves a lot of high-tech equipment. Vancouver Helicopter took us up into the mountains for these great aerial shots, while our friends with Whistler Snowmobile Tours chauffeured our equipment up and down the slopes. As you can imagine, moving television equipment across the mountain is a massive job. When all else fails, give our man Hilti a snow machine and tie technical producer Jerry Williamson on the back as the wagon master. With all our gear in place, it's time for the women's aerial event. Let's take a look at the standings after three events. Lena Cheryzova on top, Colette Brand close behind in second. Top Canadian once again is Katrina Kubank. Katrina, of course, going for the combined gold medal in today's competition. Anna, the weather certainly a factor. The, the fog has really, really rolled in. The fog was a problem in the morning. Now, it can be a disadvantage for the BC competitors because generally they get sent in the worst weather. The A seed, which is top 10 and top 20 men, do the harder moves, and so they try to give them a better time of day to jump. And a solid effort for Katrina's first jump, 70.85 points. Not such an easy time with her second attempt, however. Well, Katrina increased her degree of difficulty for her second jump, doing a single twisting double flip. Now the degree of difficulty, the DD, is 2.9. And I think weather may have been a factor. You can see how foggy it is. It's very difficult to define the landing. They do throw pine boughs onto the landing hill so that you can distinguish between the gray in the sky and the gray on the snow. But it almost looks here that Katrina just didn't anticipate for the landing to come as quickly as it did. Disappointing, but she still is in contention for the gold in the combined. So for Katrina Kubank, she finished in the B seed in sixth position. The class of the B-Seed was Sweden's Marie Lindgren. This was her best effort of the day, her second jump. She was doing a double twisting double flip. It's known as full full in freestyle skiing. It's 
very well executed. You can see that she had absolutely no problems with the landing. Here you can see a strong takeoff, continued her twisting through the two flips and got ready for the landing, didn't have a problem seeing it, an excellent jump. We As we saw in Team France, athletes from the BC can move on to the medal podium and certainly a combined total of 152.08 points will keep Marie Lindgren in contention for a medal today. After the BC competition, Marie Lindgren of Sweden sits on top with Sonia Reichardt of Germany in second, the top Canadian again, Katrina Kubank in sixth place. We move to the A seed. These are the top competitors. We start things off with Norway's Hilda Lid, the first of two rounds of jumping. Hilda's performing a lay full. It's a single twisting double flip. Now in the A seed, you will see a higher degree of difficulty from the women. That's an excellent jump by Hilda. Now remember, 50% of the score is form. So the judges are looking for a tight body position, feet held there together and control in. through the jump. Here you can see Hilda's really looking at the landing hill. See how she twists and her eyes never go off the landing. It's very important that the skiers can see the landing. You can see the fog seems to have lifted. That's great news for the athletes and for Hilda Lid, a score of 80.47 points in her first attempt. But the scores are being included and judged against the... Up next is American Tracy Evans. Her best so far this season, Anna, has been two fifth place finishes. She's part of a very strong American team that's on the World Cup circuit this year. She'll be doing a double twisting, double flip. Stretch it out, stretch it out. Well, here you could, you could hear her coach, Chris Haslock, saying stretch it out, stretch it out. In freestyle skiing, the coaches do speak to the athletes. What he's saying when he's saying stretch it out is make sure you've extended, look for the landing, don't pull your feet under, or out, and then you'll land perfectly. Boy, is she excited. Nicely done for Tracy Evans. That puts her into first spot, 85.36 points. That's now the new score to beat. World champion and World Cup champion Lena Cheryazova of Uzbekistan. You can see her degree of difficulty, 3.5. Lena is doing a triple flip with a single twist. That's lay, full, tuck, and oh, disappointing on that landing. She'll receive very low scores because of the front flip out. Now, this is uncharacteristic of Lena. She has increased her degree of difficulty. She's now doing two triple flips. She seemed to have too much speed and really forced the revolution on that triple flip and couldn't get ready for the landing. Under rotation for Lena Cheryozova, that will certainly cost her in her points. See what the judges say, 73.32 points for Lena Cheryozova's first attempt. We have seen her come back before in her final jump. Up next, American Nikki Stone. Anna, she has really come on strong this season. Well, the whole American team is doing very well. They have two fantastic training facilities into water where they're training very hard in the summer. There's an excellent lay full. The American women jump high. Their, their form isn't quite as tidy as some of the others that we, we will see. You can see here the legs start to break. She bends just a little bit for the landing, but it's important to get the landing because it's three points out of 10. Nikki Stone, 75.25 points. That puts her in third place. That bumps Lena Cheryozova, the world champion, down into fourth place. Elfi Simkin of Germany is up next. Her best this season so far has been a sixth place in La Plan. Anna, she was injured last season. She's really come on strong this season. Well, she's come back from a knee injury. Now, she's choosing to do double flips at this competition. She can do triples, but she's playing it safe. That was an excellent jump. She's using one of the very big kickers, which take her very high in the air. She's under a lot of pressure. She's just picked up a new sponsor by Owens Corning, and they're all here. The media is here. So I think she's playing it safe and wanting to get back on track at this competition. Great landing for Elfie Simkin. Look at the score, 78.88 points. That currently puts her in third position. Here's how things are shaping up after first round action. American Tracy Evans on top, Hilda Lid of Norway in second. Elfie Simkin with that wonderful jump in third. Lena Cheryozova, the world champion, is in sixth place. When we return to Blackcomb, the women jump for gold. 
Looking for the best insulation for your home, remember, not all insulation is the same. Watch out for imposters. <coughs> Do it right. Do it pink. Ladies and gentlemen, the flying stupendo! The crowd looked up to see the flips on the flying trapeze. Hey, what are you eating? Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Kellogg's Raisin Bran? You know, two scoops of plump, juicy raisins and whole grain flakes with bran? Two scoops of raisins? Two scoops. The triple flip! The flip was out of control, because the catcher went for a bowl of two scoops of raisins and Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Announcing the biggest advance in Quaker State's history. It's Quaker State's new advanced high-tech formula motor oil. It gives your engine superior protection against wear, superior protection against heat and stress, superior cleaning power. Protect your car's engine with new advanced Quaker State motor oil. It's formulated for today's high-tech engines. Trust your new car to Quaker State's new advanced high-tech motor oil. Skiing down a bone-crunching run of Olympic snow called moguls, Jean-Luc Brossard takes big air with his unbelievable Cossack. Just part of being the best freestyle ski team in the world. Canada's team. The secret is out. Later today, Cortina welcomes the women as Karen Lee Gartner aims for a win. And Kate Pace plans to keep on her winning roll that's taken her to the top of the downhill standings. They tackle Italy today. While the men set up at famed Kitzbühel, the crazy Canucks are reborn this season. Carrie Mullen is challenging consistently, and Eddie Potovinsky broke through at Salbach to cap a 1-2 Canadian finish. Next stop, Kitzbühel, coming up. Welcome back to Black Home and the women's aerial competition. This is how things look after the first round of jumping. Tracy Evans of the United States is on top. Huge surprise, the world champion Lena Cheryozova way down in sixth spot. This is Hilda Lid of Norway, Anna. She's increased her degree of difficulty to 3.15. She's adding one twist and doing a double twisting double flip. Oh, this is disappointing. She had a nice high jump. Remember, five judges look at air and form, so that's the height and the flight that the jump takes, the tidiness of the jump. But two judges look at landing, and three points are awarded from each judge for the landing. A touchback like this, although there wasn't a major mistake in the jump, it does take away most of the landing points. Problems for Hilda Lid on the landing. There you see her combined total 140.16 points. That puts her in fifth place. Remember, these scores reflect the B seed athletes as well. Here's your leader after the first round of jumping, Tracy Evans of the United States with a degree of difficulty 2.9. Tracy's doing a lay full, single twisting, double flip. A very nice jump. You can see on her landing, she just sat down a little bit. And I think the hand touched. She has excellent control, stretching through to the end. It's just here that she doesn't steady herself for the landing. She's still twisting a little bit, and that causes her to shoot off on the landing the way she did. Problems again on the landings. The total score, 150.61 points for Tracy Evans. Puts her second behind the B-seed athlete, Marie Lindgren. Her combined total was 150. 52.08 points. Now, Lena Cheryozova, the world champion, had problems in her first jump. Anna, we've seen her come back before. This is her trademark triple. Well, Elfie, Lena in the past has been very consistent, but I've noticed this year she's screaming into the kickers. And she's having problems with those landings. She's taking a lot more speed than she used to, and she's very quick with her takeoff, throwing her arms back quickly. And as a result, she doesn't have the control in the landing. Here we see the lay into the tuck. Now watch how quickly she, and how hard, she kicks out of that, the third flip, but still can't control the landing. I think she's gonna have to slow down to become more consistent. Definitely not Lena's day. Boy, when was the last time we saw Lena in eighth place? Well, the Olympics are looming over all of these aerial competitors. Lena's trying to get ready. She still has six weeks to be prepared and have these jumps mastered. I don't think we've seen the end of her. One athlete who is having a terrific competition so far is American Nikki Stone. Her degree of difficulty for this final jump, 3.15.
Here's an example of another full full with a very good landing. Now, one thing about Nikki is she takes her jumps high. She's always strong with her takeoff, but her form is sometimes sloppy. You can see the way the feet start to separate on the landing. She has to bend for it. It's just not as clean as some of the other competitors. Remember, the leader so far is Maureen Lindgren, who came out of the BC, but Nikki Stone of the United States, with a very strong effort, takes the lead away from Maureen Lindgren. The new total now to beat is 155.57 points. And our final competitor, Elfie Simkin of Germany, degree of difficulty the same as Nikki's, 3.15. Elfie's doing a full fall. Now she's using one of the bigger kickers. An excellent full fall. She is using one of the jumps that the skiers who do triples will be using, which leads me to believe that in the future we're going to see her doing triples. But for today, very solid performances on both doubles. A little sloppy through the second flip in that she bent her legs, but she got ready for the landing, and that's what counts, because landing counts for three points out of 10. Yes, Anna, that does do it. 77.17 points for her second attempt. Elfie Simpkin is your winner today at Blackcomb. She was out with an injury last year. Elfie Simpkin wins her first World Cup this season. The best performance for Nikki Stone so far. She picks up the silver. Katrina Kubank, the best Canadian in 16th. That should be enough for the combined gold. Elfie, this must be a huge relief for you. Uh, you've got a new sponsor and you won at a very important competition. Yeah, I'm so happy today. The practice time was so bad for me and on the competition I stand. Uh, I was surprised that I land and now I'm so happy. <laughs> Even with a 12th place finish in Black Home, Lena Cheryozova remains the leader overall. Colette Brand is in second. Nikki Stone consistent in third place. And Carolyn Olivier in 22nd spot was out of today's World Cup competition with an injury. As they prepare, the aerial course will return with more excitement with the men's competition. Stay with us. Well, we often listen uh, to the world of sex in our kitchen in the country. Bob Oxley and the others come up with uh, very good news stories. They have a fund of correspondence who are reliable. The World at Six from the National Newsroom. Radio's not as concerned with getting ripping pictures as television is, so they often have rather more to say about a story and go into it more deeply. A promising new treatment for women who suffer constant miscarriages. Every day, John says, do you, do you feel a movie? Do you feel a movie? <laughs> new hope for new lives. Marketplace Tuesday. A river, a dam, and a government that ignored its own scientists. It was simply a case of government looking after big business first. Tuesday on the Fifth Estate. This is Bosnia today, a land of hate, fear, and barbarism. Wednesday on Man Alive, an extraordinary portrait of one village where good friends and neighbors have suddenly become enemies. Wednesday on Man Alive. I'm a good cop. I don't care what anybody says. Laura takes Rob's cousin on as a client. You don't like prostitutes, do you? It's not an open and shut case, and... Your coming here is not a good idea. Is Olivia's client too close for comfort? Street Legal, 8 p.m. Friday. Welcome back to the final event of the day. Alfie Schlegel along with Anna Fraser. After two World Cup events, Christian Rizovic of Austria is in first. Nicholas Fontaine with that huge win before the holidays in second. The defending World Cup champion way down in the standings. I was a bit disappointed in seeing for a, a sixth place. After that, you know, I, I thought it over and I said it's not that bad, you know, to start off the season. I did start off quite slow and um, it's maybe just a precaution because, you know, uh, the Olympic team and everything, it's pretty soon and just wanted to play it safe and maybe I played it a bit too safe. As we flash back to just one year ago, what a great story on this very site. Rookie Andy Kapicic won his first ever World Cup event. Well, everyone expected that a Canadian could win. They didn't expect it to be the rookie of the team. This year, Andy's a veteran and he's flown his family out to watch the competition. His mom and dad on hand, as well as his girlfriend, to see if Andy can repeat his win from last year. But first, Dennis Kapicic, who also competed in the BC competition. This was his best jump for the day. 
Well, Dennis has been in his brother Andy's shadow for a year. He had a rough start to the season and was really happy to put it together here at Blackcomb with his family watching. He was doing a single twisting triple flip. It was his best jump and an excellent score. Great performance by Dennis Kapicic. And for brother Andy, he was certainly thinking about the jump ahead. Could he repeat as champion? He was very comfortable on top of the mountain of Blackcomb. Andy's final jump was a triple twisting, triple flip. That's full, full, full. He was hoping to get back into the A seed for the rest of the World Cup. And he put it down just like he did last year. Of course, now he has to sit and wait to see what will happen when the A-seed competitors jump. Fantastic day of jumping for both Canadians. The coaches were happy, Andy was happy, so was his family, and a total score of 209.93 points. Well, we've seen this before. That could be good enough to hold up in the A-seed of competition. So after the B seed was completed, Andy Kapicic with a commanding lead was way up in front with 209.93 points. Brother Dennis was in fourth. The crowd is in for a real show. This is the men's A seed of competition. First round action. We begin with the captain of the Canadian Air Force. Philippe Laroche's degree of difficulty is 4.45. He's actually doing a double full, full, full. And there's the Philippe Larage of old, well executed. He's chosen to do his more difficult jump first. It is a hard jump because the competitor has to do two twists right off of the kicker. You can see how he's spinning and then preparing for the next two flips with two twists. Anna, he was a bit conservative early on in the World Cup circuit, but he said he was going after it. He did just that in his opening jump, a score of 103.68 points. Remember, still a very strong field of competitors to come. And coming up right behind Philippe is Lloyd Langlois, his teammate, with only two sixth place finishes this season. Anna, Lloyd is still looking to move on to the medal podium. Well, Lloyd's starting the competition with full, 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 triple twisting, triple flip. It has a degree of difficulty of 4.05, less than Philippe's last jump. Oh, that's so disappointing for Lloyd. He went very, very high. This is a, a repeat of what happened to him at the World Championships. He had a strong takeoff. You can see he's looking for the landing through the three flips and three twists. It's right here. It's like he wasn't as strong as he should have been. The, the outrun is a bit sticky because of the weather and you just can't slack off until you're actually in the finish area. And boy, does that jump throw him way down in fourth place. A very low score, 85.86 points for Lloyd Langlois of Canada, de defending World Cup champion. Eric Bergust of the United States, seventh on the World Cup circuit so far. His best Anna has been a third place in Piancovallo, Italy. He's doing a triple twisting, triple flip. That's the full, full, full. And here is the style that's becoming very characteristic of the Americans. He reminds me a lot of Trace Worthington, who unfortunately got injured at this event in training and won't be competing. But look how straight he is, keeping stretched right to the very end. Small break in the feet, but the judges won't take much off for that. A fantastic first effort for Eric Bergust. He takes first place over Philippe Laroche with a score of 110.97 points. This is Austria's Christian Rizovic. He's the World Cup leader at this point, but Anna, he's chosen to do a degree of difficulty. It's only worth 3.8 for his first jump. Christian's doing lay full, full. He does not do the high degree of difficulty that Philippe Laroche or Lloyd Langlois can do. However, he performs beautifully. These jumps go very high. Now remember, two points out of 10 are for air. The judges look at the takeoff and then the form in the flight. Christian has a very solid takeoff and keeps very tight throughout the whole jump. Well, a lower degree of difficulty from the first few competitors we've seen so far, but nevertheless, 102.79 points. That puts Christian Rizovic into fourth place. Chris Federson of the United States, the Americans making a huge statement here in Blackcomb. 
Chris is doing a double twisting triple flip. Now, none of the Americans are doing the same degree of difficulty that Trace Worthington would have done, but they're performing very well. Another excellent lay full full. Again, that pencil straight form, which is so important. Look at the way Chris is just squeezing right to the landing and no problem on that landing. He's happy in beautiful form, a score of 105.45 points that puts Chris Federson in second place behind teammate Eric Burgost. Nicholas Fontaine, remember, he won gold in Piancavallo just before the holidays. That's moved him up into second place on the overall World Cup circuit. Nicholas is really starting to shine this year. He's doing triple twisting, triple flip. Wow, we're seeing the men jump so well today, Elfie. Uh, it's great to see Nicholas landing. Last season, he just had a terrible time. He was falling all of the time, didn't seem consistent in his jumping, but he's back on track. He's jumping the way he did the season of 92. One thing that's so important about landings is that a skier doesn't give up until they're in the finish area. Much more consistent this year, Nicholas Fontaine with a score of 101.04 points. That puts him in sixth place. The Americans still have first and second spot. This is Canadian Bernard Sivigny, just 21 years old from Charlesburg, Quebec. And he was a rookie last season. He is a younger competitor. He's like Andy Kapacek, always in the shadow of Philippe Laroche and Lloyd Langua. A very good full, full, full. That's the triple twisting, triple flip. The Canadians had a slow start to the season. They didn't get as much aerial training in on snow as they'd hoped to have in November, but you can tell they're back and they're strong and wanting to do well at this event. Bernard Sevigny really happy with his first jump, 104.69 points that puts him currently into fourth place. David Bellumer, the combined skier from Canada, and he's trying to keep himself in contention for the combined gold. Well, his injury was so frustrating last season, but he's back and strong, doing a triple twisting, triple flip. Well executed. Elvi, I should point out there's over 20 men on the World Cup circuit doing triple twisting, triple flips. The level of competition has increased significantly over the past few years. It's great to see that somebody who's been out for a year can come back and get right back on track so quickly. What a great comeback season for David Bellumer. He is indeed psyched. He moves into fourth place with 104.89 points in his first jump. So after first round action, the Americans are putting on quite a show, grabbing the top three spots. Canadians are in fourth, fifth and seventh place. When we return to Blackholm, the excitement of the men's aerials continues. Medals are on the line. Stay with us. Not long ago, they learned about the review. They knew six other plants were after the assignment. They understood that to compete would require not just building a new product, but also setting a new standard for quality. Most of all, they believed in themselves. And today, Canadians build these cars for the entire world. The company is General Motors. What are we going to do about the RSP this year? You got any ideas? There's always GICs, but nah. So we get a tax break. Look at interest rates. Can't we do better than that? You'd think so. Maybe we need a game plan, you know? Look at the big picture. Well, let's get on it. Call investors today. This is Grosel, the Irish island. They came to Canada in the coffin ships. This was the worst thing that ever happened to my mind in Canadian history. Refugees from the Irish potato famine. The first ship, the Virginius, when it arrived at Grosel, had 170 people dead on board. Thousands laid to rest in the mass graves of this island in the St. Lawrence. We're going to celebrate these deaths? Doesn't make sense. Hunger's Children, Monday at 10 on Witness.
Canada's freestylers are flying high again and up to their usual World Cup tricks. An aerial assault fills northern New York skies over Lake Placid, January 29th. Welcome back to Black Home Mountain. Here are the standings after the first round of men's aerial competition in the A-seed. As you can see, the Americans claiming first through third, followed by a very strong group of Canadian skiers. Now we're going to start the final round with Philippe Laroche and an extremely important World Cup event for Philippe. Philippe, for his second jump, is doing a triple twisting, triple flip. It doesn't have the same degree of difficulty as his first jump. The competitors have to do two different jumps in each competition. That was an excellent jump. Now this is the way Philippe jumped at the World Championships last year at the 92 Olympics. He has not been on the medal podium so far this season, but I think he's back. He's using this competition as a practice for the Olympics. Look at the form, squeezing right through to the end. Small little knee bend, but boy, I bet the judges wouldn't pick that up. Philip has really been pacing himself this season, but he comes through big here in Blackcomb. A total score of 215.25 points. That puts him at the top of the pack. But up next is his teammate Lloyd Langlois. Lloyd having a really rough time at things in his first jump. Anna, he's really increased his de degree of difficulty. Well, this degree of difficulty is the same as the double full, full, full. The difference is Lloyd does two twists on the second flip. Well, he landed it, but he was back, and the judges will take note of that. His air and form were good, that's seven points. There's the double twist in the middle flip, gets ready for the landing, is just a little bit back, and so skied it out on his tails. Lloyd Langlois having a lot of problems with his landings. It's been very char characteristic this season. You can see a total score 186.87 points. That will keep him out of the medals for today. And the leader so far, Philip LaRoche, followed by Andy Kapachik. Remember, Andy competed in the B seed. This is American Eric Burgus. Eric was the leader after first round action. Anna, he's going for a huge DD. He's one of four men in this competition doing double full, full, full. That's two twists in the first flip right off the kicker. Well done. A small problem with that landing, just a little bit over rotated. But he's a newer skier doing the quadruple twisting triple flip. Now you can see there's the double twist right off the jump. It's a difficult maneuver to do. He just wasn't quite ready for the landing, let his skis go through a little further than he should have. But I think we're seeing he's going to be a very strong contender and he's definitely filling Trace Worthington's shoes. Another competitor having slight problems with the landings, 200.19 points, puts Eric Bergus into fourth place. Christian Rizovic, the World Cup leader so far, his DD 4.05. Christian's doing a triple twisting, triple flip. Now watch the form. An excellent jump. You can see he just stays so straight through that whole flip. He makes it look so easy. Now Christian does not do a quadruple twisting, triple flip. And he's definitely benefiting this year by being consistent. As you can see, he's in the top three on the World Cup. Beautiful jump, as you said, Anna. Look at that second score, the highest score we've seen so far, 117.85 points. Puts Christian Rizovic into first place, bumping Philip Laroche into second. There's Nancy Green Rain, one of Canada's all-time ski heroines, along with her husband, Al. Interested spectators in today's competition, they were both longtime residents of Whistler. Chris Federson of the United States had a wonderful first jump. He's doing a triple twisting, triple flip, the same jump that we saw Christian Rijevic just do. You can see the strength that these aerialists have to have, particularly on their landings. Now, a lot of us, if we were sitting back on our skis like Chris was on that landing, would have fallen. But he is a strong competitor. Here you can see he's getting ready for that landing. Right there, the strength in the legs to be able to pull himself up and ski out the landing. Chris Federson with his second score considerably lower from his first 87.27 points moves him into sixth position. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. The best is yet to come. Nicholas Fontaine, remember he won gold just prior to the holidays. He's hoping to make it a second. Nicholas is doing the double full, 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 the same jump that we saw Philippe perform. There is 
the Nicholas Fontaine of old. This is what we saw at the 92 Olympics. He disappeared through the 93 season, but he's holding his own. This is fantastic. Here's the double twist right off the jump. See the way he's controlling with his hands, looking for the landing. He knows where he's gonna put his feet down. Again, an example of the double twist. They have to pull so hard and then be in control to get ready to land. And there's the strength in the landing that is so vital. He is certainly happy, very consistent on his landings. The top score of the day, 122.37 points. Looks as if Nicholas Fontaine is going to win his second consecutive World Cup. However, there is still one competitor left, his teammate Bernard Sevigny. A strong showing for Bernard in his opening round of jumping. Well, now, Elfie, you said there's one competitor left. You'll note that Bernard is doing a lay full full. The degree of difficulty is not as high as Nicholas's. It'll be very hard for him to move ahead. Oh, the Canadians are jumping so well. It's wonderful, especially to see the jumpers like Bernard and Nicholas coming on strong and being consistent. A jump well done for Bernard. Back in the scoreboard, we're recapping days Strong of showing for Bernard USA, Sevigny with a total of 201.02 points, a very respectable jump, performance. He is in sixth position here at Blackholm. So Nicolas Fontaine, the winning streak continues. He wins the first event in North America. Philippe Laroche finds his way back to the podium and Andy Kapchik finishes in fourth. Nicholas, a huge relief to have won your second World Cup. Yeah, I cannot believe it still, but uh, I'm really happy. I, could, I, I, I didn't think this morning when I arrived I was going to win today. After the 92 Olympics, everybody was expecting that you would be someone we would see on the medal podium. You had a lot of problems last year. What have you done to get on track for this season? I think the last year was good for me. It was bad, but it was good because uh, all summer I was training mentally and uh, I was training really hard. I wanted to start strong the year and uh, I think that's, uh, that's what it's put me really strong this year. I was really upset about the year of last year and now it's going well. After three World Cup events, Nicholas Fontaine of Canada and Christian Rizovic of Austria are tied in points, but because of Nicholas's two wins, he moves out in front. A bronze medal by Philippe Laroche puts him back in the running. Let's enjoy that winning performance one more time. We'll be back to wrap things up. When you're looking for the best insulation for your home, remember, la, 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 la. not all insulation is the same. La, 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 la. Watch out for imposters. La, la. Do it right, do it pink. The average commuter spends an hour and 13 minutes driving every day. So ask yourself whether that hour belongs to the road or whether the road belongs to you. The smooth handling Mazda 626 Chronos. It's all about working and living, chasing your dreams and driving your Mazda. Uh, the cost of living, uh, the cost of raising kids, cost of painted butter. Oh, something that doesn't go up in price. It's 1995. That's good. Okay. Nick, you paying attention? Yeah. Yeah. Ever dreamed of a showdown with one of the best goalies in the NHL? McDonald's can make your dream come true with Upper Deck Fantasy Pack cards. Four cards, 49 cents for the purchase of a drink. You can win a trip to a Stanley Cup game via Canadian. Ice time with Pavel Bure, a showdown with Patrick Waugh, or one of 150,000 great prizes. Start the new year off just right with no charge automatic or equivalent credit of up to $1,000 right now on selected new Mazdas. Hurry to your Mazda dealer for great deals. Now doesn't that feel just right? Aerobic strength greater than almost every sport. Yet when the judges are watching, ballet is grace under pressure. Ashley Herod, magic. Part of the best freestyle ski team in the world. Canada's team. The secret is out.
Club Freestyle, brought to you by Owens Corning Canada, proud sponsor of the Canadian Freestyle Ski Team. Undefeated this season, Katrina Kubank continues to sweep the women's combined over Natalia Orokova of Russia and Maya Schmidt of Switzerland. It was two for two for Canada's combined skiers, a big day for David Bellamer. Injured last season, he's back on top. A huge day for the Canadian Air Force. They never disappointed this crowd. Anna, they really came through with flying colors. Well, first, third, and fourth, you can't ask for a lot better than that. But it was wonderful to see Nicholas Fontaine win his second World Cup. He's definitely holding his own this season. And Blackcomb always seems to be filled with surprises. We saw this in the men's mogul event, an event where rookies really make a name for themselves. And what a surprise this time with Mark McDonnell off the NORAM team winning the bronze medal. And David Bellamer, the combined skier, winning big today at Blackholm. It's wonderful to see David back and in form. That injury that he had last season took him out for the whole year, but he's back and he's strong. He was the top Canadian in ballet, had excellent results in both moguls and aerials, and I think it's an indication of what we can expect for the rest of the season. Well, two Canadians have been confirmed to the Olympic team, that's Jean-Luc Broussard and John Smart. We'll be back in two weeks' time from Lake Placid, New York. At that time, we'll be able to announce the entire Canadian Olympic squad. So until then, for Anna Fraser, I'm Elfie Schlegel. So long from Blackcomb. Next Saturday, more World Cup downhill skiing. The men travel to Wengen, Switzerland at 2 Eastern. And following, the ice stars of the NHL will convene at Madison Square Garden for the 45th annual Dream Matchup. Next Saturday evening, the NHL All-Stars display their talents in a special skills competition. Our next freestyle event comes your way from Lake Placid as the World Cup Tour continues. We'll see you then. Scotia, Sunday, January 23rd on CBC. Good evening. This is CBLT in Toronto.